Welcome to Motorbike Adventures of Britain, Cumbria, and the Lake District. <laughs> Sponsored by Held UK, Rider Equipment and the Rooster Cafe and Restaurant in Penrith. We're starting this adventure located right on the edge of the new Yorkshire National Park and the Lake District National Park. Right here at Ravenstone Dale in the Eden Valley of Cumbria. And we're at the Fat Lamb. And you can see by the sign on the road, bikers are welcome, which is good stuff. As you can see, loads of parking. So, why don't we go inside and have a look? So we're right on the edge of Ravenstone Dale at the southern end of the Eden Valley surrounded by gorgeous countryside and this adventure is going to take us around Eden Valley to show you the sights and to give you the sounds and smells <laughs> Hey, wouldn't it be good if we could bring the smells, smell a vision Now our first part of call is going to be Kirby Stephen. But I'm going to take you a different route. As you come up here, just over the cattle grid you can turn right. And this will give you a totally different view because we're going to go down into Malastang. Now the region of Malastang over there is a little bit famous and it's a little bit famous because you've got an area called Wild Boar Fell which is just over the tops of this little rise here and it is reputed that that is where the last wild boar in England was killed Aren't humans great? So the last wild boar, a few hundred years ago, was killed in this area. Hence the name, Wild Boar Fell. But it's also a lovely, a lovely road to ride through. We could have quite easily have continued 
but you wouldn't have seen this, would you? How about that for fabulousness? Right here, in my Eden Valley. Isn't that just gorgeous? Isn't it? It's all right, you can say yes. But isn't that just gorgeous? And then when you get to the end, we're going to turn left, but we're going to stop first. Because <coughs> here we are at Pendragon Castle. The ruins of a castle built in the 1100s or the 12th century. Look at that for you. You can even see how thick the walls are from here. But what a great place. You see the little knoll that it's on the top of. And that view down there? We even liked the views in the 1100s. It was built upon as well in the 14th century. So you have a 12th century keep or a castle. And then it was added into in the 14th century. Isn't it mint? And here we are inside it. Pendragon Castle. Look at the views north. And look at the views south. What a brilliant place to build a castle. Thickness of the walls. Supposedly a window down there. It must have been drafty, mustn't it? So, Pendragon Castle. You can find out more about it at pendragoncastle.co.uk We head our way now towards Kirby Stephen. And then we come into the outskirts of Kirby Stephen. In what is classed. So we come into the centre of Kirby Stephen, like all good little villages. A selection of cafes and tea rooms, fish and chip shops. But more importantly, so you can find out more information, straight in front, the Upper Eden Visitor Centre. It's the Tourist Information Centre, full of leaflets and knowledge about this area and other areas as well. So you can gather up all your stuff. And then at the end here you come to a little roundabout where we're going to turn left. We turned left because we're doing a little bit of a zigzag through the Eden Valley just to capture as much as we can. Now down in the bottom of this valley, this cutie little valley, you've got what is probably one of the cutest bridges I've ever seen. It's a little footbridge. And it's absolutely mint. There it is, look at that. There's an old footbridge for you. Isn't that fabulous, that? And that's been there for hundreds of years, I would have thought. But we continue up, and what we're going to go on to is Orton Scar. So we turn left, 
and we head towards the Scar. It's also the area of a village called Little Aspie, A-S-B-Y. And as we get over the other side of the Scar, we're going to go to a superb little cafe. There's the dogs. Keep up! <laughs> Run faster! Run faster! Anyhow, these rocks. Let's talk about them for a bit. I'll just get to the top and I'll pull in. Now what we've got here is you can see the scar all the way up there. Looking round, that's all the Howgill Fells. Right over there, you can see it grilly grilly grilly, then it goes into a V. That's where the M6 runs through. Then it goes right the way around it. Over that area, right over those hills there, you'll find hose water. But, what about these rocks? Well, believe it or not, a gazillion years ago, this used to be the floor of an ocean. And back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, there was lots of crustaceans in that ocean. And when they died, they fell to the ocean floor. And they created these rocks. These rocks here are the shells of crustaceans. And it goes all the way over here, over this hill here, and there's some on the other side. And the other place that you'll be able to find them is down at Malham Cove. Malham Cove has very similar, but they're more dramatic. You can see where the earth has eroded around so that the rocks jut out. It really is quite impressive down at Malham Cove. But that's what this is all about, this scar. They are old crustacean shells. So, let's go back to the bike and carry on. Up on the top of that hill, over there, the camera unfortunately won't be picking it up, but there's whacking great clumps of the stone sticking out of the ground. And that's how they were able to tell that this was once a seabed, the bottom of an ocean. One weird that, isn't it? That's weird that. Now, just as we get along here, we're going to turn right at this junction. But there's something really nice to see. See, back in the day, children had to go to school, didn't they? And out here, well, they had to make their own school. And that's it there. That is an old school. So, a little while ago, all the children from around the local farms used to come here to go to school. And it's Raysbeck Dame School. It's not very big, is it? Let me stand in the corner. There is another level. And there you go. And it was erected in 1780. Must have been mint to go to school here.
most of the lessons must have been outside, do you think? Teaching the kids here. What a fat base upbringing. So built in 1780, but it fell into ruin. And the local community have restored it. Because it's of significant interest. Not only to the local area, but to people from further afield. You know, kids love growing up with their grannies and granddads saying, I used to go to school there. And look at it, it's now in ruin. Well, it isn't anymore. And you can go in and read the walls full of history. And now at five minutes past 12, we're gonna go and have some lunch. So make your way on the road that will take you to Appleby as you get to the outskirts of Orton just on the right you've got Orton Scar Cafe How cool is that? So I've taken you to Orton Scar I've taken you to Orton the village and now I'm taking you to Orton Scar Cafe And what we're going to do is have a quick look inside. I am. So you've got a good selection of cakes and even now do pies. So we leave Orton Scar Cafe, having had some of the tastiest soup I've had in a long time. Broccoli and Stilton soup. I must look out for that again. That was just tasty. So we're going to climb up onto the tops now above Orton for another stunning view. And then look at that. I'll take you over so we get an even better view. We've ridden through the bottom end here, through the valley, and we ended up in Orton, which is over there. That's where we've had lunch. But this is all the Howgill Fells. Over there, that's where the M6 runs through, and that's where the T-Bay Junction is. And it continues around. And you've got all this fabulous countryside to ride through. It's impressive, isn't it? But we continue. Over in that distance there, that's where you've got your horse water in amongst the hills over there, which is fantastic. Have a look on the Orton Adventure. Orton Adventure? Have a look on the Alston Adventure. As we go and visit horse water. And eventually we drop down into Appleby blanketed by beautiful green trees 
It's also the ancient capital of Westmoreland because Cumbria used to be called Westmoreland. And in fact the full postal title for this area is Appleby in Westmoreland. So it was the ancient capital. And she's also home to Appleby Castle. And we are going to go and have a look inside. at Appleby Castle you're already talking about being part of history that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. There was a building here on this site even in Roman times and what we're looking at now is the part of the property that is still occupied and it is the oldest occupied building in Cumbria dating back to the 1100s. Above me now we've got the round tower this was built in the 1200s and it juts out so that it can protect the gate as well as look over the moat. But one of the areas of particular interest is right on the top. You've got a medieval toilet. Another superb part of the castle is the portcullis door behind me. The portcullis door that you can see up there dates from around about 1180. But you can still see the grooves in the brickwork where the portcullis used to operate up and down. With the original castle being built around 1096, it was an earthwork enclosing the hilltop with a deep ditch. Or moat as we call it. But look at that, that still survives the portcullis door. So you can see by coming to Appleby Castle, part of the Eden Valley and Appleby Castle tour, you can get a guided tour around the castle as well. Check on the website for details. There is a tea room for tea, coffee, cakes, sandwiches. You're going to be part of the history and heritage dating back hundreds of years. Part of this was built when Roman, the Romans occupied Britain. It's steeped in history. This was around when Henry VIII was around. But her most impressive resident was Lady Anne Clifford. Now when she came into the area, she actually renovated quite a number of castles around the region. But Appleby Castle is by far one of the most impressive castles in the whole of Cumbria. You can also stay here and that's what we're going to go now and have a look at. The cottages next to a Norman keep dating back again to the 1100s. Imagine staying inside the castle. Imagine being next to fantastic history and heritage like that. Come on, let's go and have a look. And there it is there, in all its splendour. Built in the 1100s, but renovated more recently. <laughs> and when I say more recently, we're talking of the 1600s, when Lady Anne Clifford occupied the property. She put another couple of floors in, she put fireplaces in, so it could be occupied. Now, with the Norman keep behind me, what we're going to go and do is have a look at the cottages. The cottages, in fact, in the 1600s, belonged to Lady Anne Clifford's laundry room. But you can now stay in them next to this fabulous Norman keep. And as we walk across, you can just see how close they are. And even the doors are full of history and heritage.
within the cottages is you go through the door. On the left you have the lounge with a lovely log burning fire. Just off the lounge you've got the kitchen with a superb view through the window down towards Appleby. A super double bedroom and a gorgeous bathroom with a jacuzzi bath and large shower. But within the living room the settee is a sofa bed so it can sleep up to two more people. Within another of the cottages you drop down into the lounge again with a lovely log burning fire. More open plan with the kitchen just to the side of the, the living area. Up a cute spiral staircase onto the bedroom floor where there is a twin room and a double room. And again a lovely bathroom. And for further information look at the website because within the castle itself they offer serviced rooms with a state room and a bed in the state room dating back so far you'd think Henry VIII had slept in it. So there we have it, Appleby Castle, history, heritage within a fabulous location where you can stay, where you can discover and explore and enjoy yourself where you can base yourself to explore Eden Valley further into the Lake District and for that matter just over the hill into the Yorkshire Dales. We very much look forward to seeing you soon. Then we come down into Appleby itself. Now Appleby, that wall where the gable end is facing us, is the oldest occupied building in the county the old Moot Hall and this building was established in 1179 and in fact on the end there that's the tourist information centre for Appleby. I would say the Eden District maintains some fantastic tourist information facilities and they do a great job of promoting the area as well. Working with the local businesses to bring people in to enjoy this wonderful region. <laughs> so we're going to continue further towards the North Pennines. Fabulous or what? Looks even more impressive the closer you get the Pennines, doesn't it? Another lovely little village nestling at the bottom of the Pennines. We then come into Long Martin. Now at Long Martin we're going to turn left again to kind of go back and retrace our steps a bit because that's to give you just a little view of what the northern edge or just underneath the Pennines is like. Nice country lanes, beautiful views and just takes you off the beaten track and sometimes that's what you need to do isn't it? Get yourself off the beaten track. We're now on the A66, which is the Trans Pennine route from Penrith to Scotch Corner. Now we've turned our way down to Bolton and Clifton. And it's not too far away from Clifton where we're going to be heading. You 
See, I told you it was going to be a zigzaggy route, didn't I? Isn't it good? Uh -huh. And you can just start to see the Central Lake District coming into view. And there are the mountains there that start to surround Ullswater. Now when you start to see the brown sign, large cottage nurseries, that's not where we're going, but that's the road that you take. As we head towards Melkinthorpe. And then, all of a sudden, coming into view is our next stop. And it's this farm here. And this farm is Abbott Lodge, Jersey Ice Cream. And we're gonna go and have a look inside. So we leave Abbott Lodge ice cream, having had the scrummiest of ice creams. There's nothing uh, quite bait Jersey ice cream. This is the area, well I believe, that gets mentioned more than anywhere else in the country when the weather becomes, you know, when it's winter time. And that's because it's Shap. I'm sure you've heard of Shap. The stepping stone to the lakes. Just to the right of me, and over that way, that's where you've got horse water. You can see that on another adventure. It's only six miles west from Shap. 
and then a little bit further down on the right there's a superb guest house and that's it just there the hermitage let's have a quick look inside of there And then we continue further on. And here it is. You see it says M6. Also see, it says Orton. And that's where we're heading back to. There's the brown sign we've just passed that says Orton. And it's this road that we take. And here we are, we're going to be passing under the M6. Good snaky adventure in there. Because as we get to the top of this little hill, the view becomes magnificent again. Yes, it does. How's about that, boys and girls? Impressive, isn't it? Love it. Absolutely love it. And we now enter the little village of Orton. Now, earlier on, you saw Orton Scar Cafe. So we've done a big loop. And in fact, we're going to end up doing a more or less a figure of eight. But if you go straight on there, that takes you back to the cafe. But we're not going that way, we're continuing straight on. And at this T-junction, we're turning right. And as we leave T-Bay services, we turn left, which is going to take us towards Kirby Stephen. We passed through earlier today. And when you consider, here we are, about 20 mile, maybe, south of Penrith. But we're only 44 miles from Scotch Corner. This area is so very achievable. Now this is where we're going to turn off to the right. This is a little junction where you see the big blue sign Ravenstone Dale Local Services. We're going to turn right into here and this is going to take us back towards where we started. And then we turn right where it says Ravenstone Dale in Sedba. And Sedba is only 12 miles away. Oh, the stream's looking lovely, isn't it? 
in good flow. With the beautiful wild, this side of the wild boar fell. Over the other side, you've got the malastang that we went up earlier today. Riding around such gorgeous countryside is an absolute privilege. Soak it all in. Take as many photographs as you can. Have memories to last you a lifetime. So as we come towards the end of this adventure, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed riding with me and that you come and follow these tyre tracks as well. Doesn't have to be the same ones, just come and explore this region. It's beautiful. Has so much to offer. Because on the right, as we get to the T-junction, we find ourselves back at the Fat Lamb. Welcome to Motorbike Adventures of Britain, Cumbria and the Lake District. Sponsored by Held UK, Rider Equipment and the Rooster Cafe and Restaurant in Penrith. <laughs>